Bingo, we're back for Trump Week, my favorite show. We're calling this edition, this episode, The Testimony She Is Damning. And the tagline is, but will the Republicans break ranks? Question mark. Tim Apicella, Cynthia Sinclair, how are you guys? Is everything Good morning. okay? Good yeah. morning, Everything's Deb. wonderful. How do you feel about Trump this week? Up, down, in the middle? Up. Up. Uh, anytime the truth can be revealed, I feel better. And those testimonies that are being released, which we'll talk about, I feel far better than the truth is being um, put out there and as per the request of the Republicans. Yeah. You know, be careful what you ask for. You might just get it. Well, then when you get it, then you right. complain about it. Correct. That's what you do. I mean, it's, it's predictable. It's really, and it's dishonest. It's, right. There's so many dishonest things happening now. Uh, how about you? How do you feel, Cynthia? Well, I'll tell you, I have a great Adam Schiff quote for this exact thing right now. It says, it will be said of House Republicans, when they found they lacked the courage to confront the most dangerous and unethical president in American history, they consoled themselves by attacking those who did. Right. There's no excuse for it, and history will not be kind <clears throat> to them. Right. But, you know, so, so he was trying to get these guys in Ukraine to come along with him and support him in the election, trying to, you know, do a distraction with Biden, make Biden look bad. So what's wrong with that? It's just... It's the game, right? It's just the way you play the game, right, Tim, right? Well, they're going to have to change the narrative. I mean, this term quid pro quo has lost its luster. Um, there is more testimony of a number of credible witnesses and individuals, uh, even um, you know, on Trump's own staff, that this took place. Uh, so they're going to have to figure out, now saying there was no quid pro quo, now they're going to have to say, yeah, there was, so what? Big deal. Yeah, what of it? So each each so. time, you know, there's something they've taken the position on fails, they, they find something else. But it's the Democrats' fault, too, on this. And, and that is, there's opportunities galore for them to look at the truth and the obvious point of the truth and amplify it and communicate about it. But they can't do it. For example, why use the term, a Latin term, quid pro quo, when 95% of America really doesn't understand the impact of what that means. Was that the Democrats? Let's just call for what it is. Was that the Democrats? Yes. Well, everyone's using the term. They have Where been using the term. From? Somebody started Someone it. started it. And I, and I argue this. Stop using Latin. Use the American Queen's English. Extortion is the word. Let's look at the term extortion. Practice of obtaining something through force or threats. So stop calling it quid pro quo. Call it what it is. He tried well, to extract that's a, that's a good an extortion. Point. That's a good point. And, and I mean, when, most Americans when don't know does what the it Democrats is. start using language that Americans will understand yeah. the impact of? Yeah. So I'm not just saying it's the Republicans playing games. It's the Democrats failing to understand what, where they're at and how to utilize what is in front of them, which is the truth of the situation. Okay, but what, what else? Is that it? I mean, surely you were talking about opportunities the Democrats could have taken. What else? Well, I just think that, again, um, you've got to be careful on how long you protract this. Do we now have enough information? How many more witnesses are we going to bring? So it's not an opportunity. It's, it's a decision that they're making as to how long they, they you know, go down this rabbit hole with all the different witnesses. And, and, and to the credit of the Democrats, though, they are getting witnesses that are pigeonholing Trump into a point where he can't argue against it or his Republicans. Is it, is, is, is it over, really? Is it Should be. Is it soup? You know? It's soup. It, it's soup. It's time to put the soup out do, on the table. Do they, do they need Bolton? Do you need Bolton? No, do you need you do Bolton? Not. No, you've got you enough. Know, it's almost like you say to these guys, look, you know, When's enough? you want to go down in history as a, as a guy who, you know, cheated, a guy who supported a cheating president, or do you want to go down in history and tell the truth? No. This is your moment in history. Yeah. So, Bolton, we're not going to subpoena you. We're not going to fight. We're not going to spend six, six years in court over it. You know, come around or don't come around. Your, your, your opportunity. Yeah. And, uh, of course, that doesn't work. But uh, I think if it was me and I was Bolton, I would come around regardless of what Trump said. Yeah. No, I would, too. He's mad at Trump anyway. What, what's holding him back? Well, look at Sondland. And that's one of the things we should talk about is he's been allowed the opportunity to edit his testimony. Um, yeah. Now, usually when you go to one of these, you know, kind of hearings and you're under oath and you're in front of Congress, you usually have about a day to amend your testimony in case you forgot something or 
you you didn't recall something and you tried to basically clarify your existing testimony before the, the committee? Well, we're over a week and a half, you know, before this happened. He came back and said, oh yeah, I forgot that it really was a quid pro quo. My, now, um, isn't that silly? Well, well, I think what's really troubling about it is, uh, aside from the time factor, um, there could have been scheduling issues, who knows. But, but what he said was, the other witnesses, and he wasn't there for the other witnesses, um, have uh, jogged my memory. Now I remember. It was just their opening statements that he read that jogged his memory. Right. Refreshed his recollection. Refreshed his recollection. To use his exact term. Now, yeah. you know, if, if I had to guess, just me, I would, I would think the big factor for him is the press was talking about um, Congress holding him uh, as a perjurer, right. going after him for mm -hmm. perjury. Um, and that's what... Spooked him. Spooked that's him. what That's spooked what him. happened. I yeah, agree you with you. So. I think the president yes. actually did something right. <laughs> they <laughs> spooked him into the truth. Yeah, for Halloween, yeah. yeah. And one right. of the things that he <laughs> right. said was that it kept getting more insidious as the timeline went on. And that's in regards to... You know, the pressure that was being placed on uh, Zelensky. Yeah. Now, here's one thing we haven't heard from Donald Trump, and that's his usual barrage of insults to anyone that has turned, turned coat on no, him. No, not lately. Yeah, he's been very quiet about it. I, I expected a full Twitter barrage from Trump against Sondland. He must have. And I haven't know, seen that. He must know how tiresome that gets. You know, anybody testifies against him one after the other, he just calls them names. Doesn't but he never misses people. that opportunity. Not until now. Yeah. So what? What? So if there's a, a change here, what? What's the cause of the change? Is it he's just fatigued? I don't believe he's that. He's taking somebody's advice. His lawyers are telling him, "Don't you dare!" Yeah. Is what's happening. I think. You think he's finally he, listening to the attorneys? Well, I think he has no choice at this point now. So I don't know if it was necessarily his attorneys that were telling him, "Don't you do it before now?" But now there's so oh. much at stake. That. I think he realizes that you can't do that, witness after witness after witness. You know, right. it just it falls flat. Nobody's going to believe it. He's playing to the public. He's playing to his base. And his base is firm. And that's what I was, I was going to ask you guys. So with all this action in the Congress, uh, and I, I'm not including yet the live action next week, you know, where the public will be able to watch this on television, just like Watergate, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or the McCarthy hearings where everybody is watching everything. Right. Um, <clears throat> Uh, is he ahead or behind? There are three possibilities. Is he losing ground because of what's happening in this investigation and, and being reported by the press because it's still closed door? Um, and, and, a, and a half question on that is, will that change next week when they go public? And, and I want to talk about that as a separate question. Um, the second is, is it just flat effect? Is it static? No change in his popularity. No change, no damage to him. It's just all in suspense until something actually happens. Uh, and, you know, the Republicans are holding, holding steady. And then the third possibility is, is he gaining? Is he gaining strength? Is he gaining strength among his, you know, by, by saying that I'm, I'm victimized and uh, they got no case and, and they're all wet? Um, so which of the three do you think, Cynthia, where do you think we are? I think that he is losing ground because, well, at least that's what the polls are showing. He's down by seven points or ten points in some of the polls. Um, with Republicans, he's still basically the same, though, so he's not really changing much as far as that goes. But I don't think he's going up at all. And I think when people really hear this testimony, these testimonies for themselves, Things are going to change because right now all they get is you know his propaganda coming out there, and and so they don't really if all they watch is Fox News, and then I've been watching trying to watch the just the regular um, network news you know the CBS and the ABC and the not just the MSNBC or the Fox News right or the CNN but just the regular news and I think it's going to we're going to really start seeing a change because they are starting to now really report more and more and more on the things that are coming out you know testimony wise and okay, evidence at this wise moment, Tim, where do you think we stand is he up down or in the middle he's slightly going down and the the, the reason I say that is I, I base it on his two main cheerleaders Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham Mitch McConnell, if you listen to his language and examine his language, very neutral, very matter of fact, um, not 
not in any way getting out ahead of the line and defending them on anything. Mm. And if you look at Lindsey Graham, everything Lindsey Graham was criticizing now has been delivered. You know, the, you know, private testimonies. Well, that's now, you know, being disclosed to written, the written testimony is being dis, uh, disclosed. And I recently saw a quote from Lindsey Graham. And they Graham. say, too little, too late. Yeah, and so now Lindsey Graham's going, basically he says, I'm not going to comment on any of this further. I've stopped reading it. I've stopped reading it. I've stopped, the truth hurts. I can't handle it anymore. So I'm just not going to comment on it anymore. Okay? Maybe we shouldn't comment on him. So, well, to answer your question, down slightly, because his, if his two main cheerleaders aren't out there cheerleading for him, that's a down. Well, yeah. Okay, so let, let me break up two things going forward. <clears throat> One is, I give you the possibility next week, probably Monday, right? Uh, wait, Monday's a, Monday is uh, Monday, Veterans Day. Day. So maybe Tuesday or thereafter next week. Not that much time left between now and Thanksgiving. And as you say, Tim, we've we got to do something here before Thanksgiving. Um, but we're going to get into this open hearing thing. And, um, you know, there's, there's this strange conflation um, between a, a, an impeachment inquiry and a trial. Uh, you know, a lot of people that, I mean, uh, not, they're disingenuous when they say this. Oh, this is like a criminal trial, and the defendant has to get all his rights and right of cross-examination and to testify, whatever. Um, and that's really not, not appropriate at all, uh, nor is a public hearing as far as I'm concerned. Um, but here we're going to get into that, and there's going to be this conflation of procedures. And so the Republicans are going to make objections. Okay? Uh, they're going to be arguing with the chair. I guess in this case, it's... Uh, it's uh, um, Adam Schiff. Adam Schiff. He's going to have to be a good chair, a strong oh, chair. No, Judiciary Committee, so it's Is it going to be Judiciary next week? I, I don't know. I don't know. Nadler, it, is, it is Judiciary. That's Judiciary, is not so it's strong Nadler. Nadler. It's not, not in the least. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, whoever the chair is, they're going to be testing the chair, you know? Yeah. It's like going to court testing the judge, and you make uh, arguments in front of them, and you never leave anybody alone. You're always trying to disrupt the procedure. Yeah. Nadler's and, already failed in that. When we had the one yeah. um, gentleman testifying, he, very he ran the show. Very hard for the chair. Yeah. Very hard for the chair. And the, and the Republicans are going to get together. They're going to have a little meeting. They're going to decide at Trump's suggestion. Let's go, boys. Uh, we're going to we're going to make this as troubled as we can. We're going to do it in such a way so that it effectively it's 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 under appeal. You know what I mean create appeal points, create irregularities in the in the procedure, um, make noise, make silly objections. Uh, Criticize people, get them discombobulated. You know, you want to get the other side discombobulated, uh, so they make mistakes. And mm -hmm. So I think we're going to see that. And uh, my question to you, I mean, I, I could be wrong. This could be very civilized, also, but I doubt it. Uh, if that happens, how do you change your answer? Who does that favor? Um, and it's it's a hard question because if they go too far with this, they're going to lose support among their own base. If they do it just right, they probably gain support, make a mockery of the proceeding. What do you think? What do you think? It's all going to depend on Chairman Nadler and how he entertains, you know, these kind of um, answers and how he runs that show, how he facilitates the hearing. And if he does a poor job, the Republicans will get their shots in. Yeah. It's, this really comes it's, down it's, to how he's going to facilitate. It's also the press. It's also the press. It's the yeah, way but here's a, here's a bright handling. spot on that. Back in 1973, 74, okay, you had CBS, NBC, and ABC. That was it. Now you have everything and everybody to report on this. Go for the good old days. <laughs> well, but in this case, you'll have more distribution of people who just pull up their cell phone and, you know, who knows what, they, you know, what news service they're putting on their Facebook. I think they've got to be very responsible. For example... If some Republican member of these committees or some, some Republican um, or some witness, who knows, gets up and makes a tumult in the hearing and tries to disrupt well, things, that's, that's the, pre the press has to see that. Yeah. They can't be taken in by it. Right. And if they're not sophisticated in, you know, in, the, in the way it should be done and the way these guys are trying to take advantage of it, then that, that hurts. Well, and I go right. back to Nather's ability to facilitate that and yeah. be able to control it properly. Right? He didn't control it very well with the Kavanaugh hearing. So if that's any, you know, example of what we're going to be dealing with this next week, then we're in for some trouble. Kavanaugh, who's the guy after that recently 
was able to you know go the Republican staff person. I can't remember his last name, um, but he basically could, took control of the entire hearing. Oh, Jay, jo no, Jack. Well, Lewandowski. Jack. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, there you that go. Was thank, thank you. you. Um, he basically took control, and now there's yeah, been held, that, uh, held right. responsible for yeah. that because right. he did a lousy so, job. So these guys don't have any experience, really, with dealing with this kind of discombobulation in, in right. Congress, and they're going to have to be. I hope they got good staffers you know, who will show them the way. They need litigation experienced staffers. But let me go to another question to post to you guys. This is really interesting. It was a piece in a paper about, about the trial, okay? And Roberts is going to be the, the judge in the trial, and he's, he's getting up to this. And, and they're pretty much, I think they're pretty much anticipating there will be a trial because, because the House will vote to impeach, yeah, well, vote yeah. to force a trial, <clears throat> okay? And, and, you know, that's good. Uh, and, and a couple of weeks ago, uh, Ms. McConnell said, Ms. McConnell said um, that uh, if, if they impeached in the House, there would be a trial. So they're getting ready for a trial. Uh, Roberts is going to be there. R Roberts is a wild card on this anyway. Um, but the, the, other, the other thing that interested me, they said, at the trial, they're going to be calling Joe Biden. I didn't hear that. What? This was in the paper this morning. So, I'm saying this, and I like your speculation on this. <laughs> so much speculation. It, it seems to me that this trial that will happen if the House impeaches is not going to be the trial you might expect. It's not going to be a trial of Donald J. Trump. It's going to be a trial of the system. It's going to be a trial of the House. It's going to be a trial of all the proceedings that went before it. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a trial of Joe Biden and his son. It's going to be anything but the trial it should be. And at the end of the day, they're not going to impeach anyway. That's my... Well, we know that. <laughs> well, it goes to what I said last week. If you can't beat them on the law, beat them on the process. If you can't beat them on the process, beat them on the witness. If you can't beat them on either three, then just wave your hands and, and try to muck up the whole, the whole proceeding. Well, Which I think, I agree with what you're saying here. Right. Well, I'm we'll see. We'll see how, that happens. Like litig the whole thing is litigation. Yeah. With litigators, at least Trump's side. The yeah. other thing is okay. that this is this trial, quote, uh, where they try to, you know, beat up on, on, on uh, Biden and beat up on the system and, and, and maybe beat up on the, the, the possibilities for, other possibilities for um, presidential nominee. Um, it's going to have an effect on the election, isn't it? Right. Okay, and if they do a real job on Biden uh, and make the Democrats look bad, uh, and I ask you my question, is that you know going to make Trump look worse, the same, or best, better? You're going to say better in the election. So I think that trial is going to be just another way for Trump to gain points for the election. That's what it is. That's why McConnell is so happy to have it. They're all, they're all ready to use this as an election weapon. You're shaking your head no. This may damage Biden to the point where he's not the nominee for the Democrats. And then someone else will fill a vacuum. Okay. Before I ask him who that would be, let me ask you what you, <laughs> what, what you wanted to say, Cynthia. I have another quote from Adam Schiff that I think is appropriate for this, what we're talking about right now. And it says, the White House excuses keep changing. First, no House vote. Second, they claim immunity, which has never been um, upheld by a judge. Now they want their lawyers, their lawyers, to participate, which is against the rules that the Republicans wrote. And it doesn't add up except as evidence of obstruction. That's what I think it all is. And I think it's a setup. I agree well, with Well, we know you. how hypocritical this whole process has been with the Republicans, right. you know, shouting to the... Up to, the, up to the rafters that this is an unfair process and behind closed doors. Well, um, you they'll, know, they'll keep doing that. Don't might you? I remind the Republicans that back in 1974, uh, John Dean met privately with Sam Irvin and uh, Michael Cohen and all the people of that committee um, in private. And those were the Republicans. So it's just a matter of remembering history and um, them refreshing their memories upon history. So let's look at the background, what he's got behind his back. Um, what has he done lately? Uh, you were talking before the show about how he's uh, threatened to cut funds to California. Right. He's been um, just ripping on uh, Newsom and <clears throat> Schiff about their bad forest management. And I loved what Newsom said back. 
He said, where is it? Uh, he said, you don't believe in climate change. You are excused from this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And he, and he pulled out of the Paris talks completely. Yes, right, yeah. completely. Yeah. So and meanwhile, uh, climate change is revealing itself in so many ways. Oh, yeah. I think one of the remarkable things, I, I don't know if we talked about this before, is that both China and Russia are in the new channels, the new passageways in the Arctic. And they're staking territory out there. And they're staking military advantage out there. And we are doing nothing. Yeah. Um, it's really scary. Yeah, there's an, scary. Not, another opportunity that right. is, is being passed well, by. But that, that's not a democratic opportunity. That's a Trump yeah, opportunity. That's a Trump opportunity. Because he's not aware of these things. He's not following them. Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, the, 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 the art of the deal. Um, okay. Um, the deal with Iran. Um, it's, 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 in a, it's in a cocked hat right now. And there was a piece in the paper about how Iran is moving toward nuclear development. That's what Trump got for his efforts. He hasn't gained anything, but they're moving now immediately toward nuclear development. Turkey. What kind of a deal with Turkey? We alienated Turkey. Turkey has been attacking us. Uh, or our positions. Uh, Turkey has been making friends with Putin. What exactly do we achieve with that? Good. You got the highway with the American troops leaving yep. and the American troops coming back. What? Um, no, no deal there. No, nothing rational. I uh, got North Korea. Remember North Korea? Yeah, I remember that place. Yeah, it's easy to forget. They've, they've been firing missiles into the Sea of Japan or whatever nearby Japan. And um, the fact is that he. He promised us a, a new summit with uh, Kim Jong Un. Nothing like crickets. Um, no, he's by firing missiles from a boat offshore, even more sophisticated. More yet. sophisticated, even yes. that boat could be off our shores. Right. Okay. Um, Ch China. Remember, we were going to have a, a resolution of the deal um, with um, you know China. The trade talks. It was going to be a peace negotiation. Nothing. Not a sound. Not even of, a, of the possibility anymore. He made some. A bold statement, he was going to work it all out. Nothing, not a thing. Um, he has too much on his plate, I guess. And P.S., the um, RCEP, which is the uh, Chinese version of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, excluding the U.S., is meeting. And they're coming around the U.S. They're, they're working around the U.S. And, and China is in charge. China is in charge of yeah, trade be, in uh, Asia. And we are not there. That'll be a powerhouse of, of partners. I mean... Also, 10 different countries of that will yeah. be a trading force. And here we are languishing with TPP. Yeah. Okay. I had more. Nothing more in Venezuela, not a sound. Oh, Iraq is coming apart. And uh, uh, he's not doing anything about it. Afghanistan, people are dying on a regular basis in the violence there. The whole Central Asia thing is coming apart. And he's, he's not doing anything. So, I mean, I know you can talk about obstruction and you can talk about, you know, extortion in, in Ukraine, but, but the fact is he's not doing his job. He's not even doing the job he said he would do, which is not really adequate anyway. Well, well we basically, yesterday was election day, was it not? That gives us 365 days until the next election. Yeah. Uh, at some point, you run, out the, you run out of the game clock. Unless he's quietly set the stage on all these different fronts that you've just discussed. Um, he's not going to get this done. And the chance of the economy... That already capitulates to a point where he just gives them what he wants, just to say, I checkmark that, and I checkmark that off the list. Buy him off. Yeah. Right. And just, you know, comes up with a lousy deal and all these different um, issues and fronts. Um, that's what I see him the doing. Farmers in, in Indiana are still going bankrupt. Yeah. And, you know, what about the economy in general? So we have more jobs, but the jobs are not as good as you want. Um, it's not clear to me uh, when the bubble is going to burst. But, but the reality, I think, between now and a year from now is it could well burst. Yeah. And that, would, that would not be good for him. Speaking of bursting, let's take a look at the election in Kentucky. Yeah, please. Um, you know, we had Donald Trump go to Kentucky and beg, if I, what I perceived as beg and pleading that, you know, don't let this happen to me. It's all about me. And get out there and vote. Um, well, it's not 100% official, but it looks like we have a Democrat governor in there. Rockwood. And, um, you know, that was a direct, basically a direct answer to Donald Trump and his ability to think his cult of personality can just sway that over and drag um, Bevins across the finish line. Yeah. And it didn't happen. One thought I had about that election is that he was down there with his rally, getting everybody excited. 
where were the national, national Democrats? Was there anybody came from the Democratic side of things and say, well, Trump is across the street. He's saying this. I'm saying that. It's not true what he says. But here's what the Democratic view is. I um, mean, you know, I really don't. I mean, maybe it's wheels within wheels. Maybe it's com complicated. There's something on uh, the news hour to suggest that the Democratic Party had made a decision not to be there, not to be a presence in that, in that, you know, those final days of those campaigns. But really, I, I don't know. You have one hand clapping when he does that. Well, I think the Democrats throw their, you know, their young to the wolves. You know, if they don't think he can win, then we don't want to be a part of that that loss. I don't think they they, they aggressively fight. And I've said that for months now. The Democrats need to learn mm -hmm. to pick themselves up and be willing to go to the front line and scrap. And if they lose, they lose. But don't go. To, don't say, "Well, I don't think we have a chance of winning, so let's, let's not show up." Yeah, um, right. That's not a way to win an election. Not in my world. I think they're too nice. Also, I agree with you that I think it, it's like they keep giving these people chances to show up. And I think why the first time they don't show up for a subpoena, slap a you know a. Uh, what you call it on him and put him in jail contempt contempt thank yeah. you that's the word i was looking for yeah. just stop contempt on him and then and and that they, you do that for a couple of them and they'll stop you know you know stop if you remember showing up. all these people that are required to uh, testify a lot more staff people they don't have a thousand you know a good attorney is going to cost you fifteen hundred dollars an hour yeah they yeah. don't have that kind of money they just don't and so if it were me i'd be i'm showing up I don't have the fifteen hundred dollars for an attorney to defend me to say don't show up. Yeah, I'm gone. So okay, so um, uh, I, what's going to happen? What's going to happen here? For example, I, I I wanted to ask you about the base. Why is the base uh, still at forty plus percent? Uh, why do they continue to support him when he's had all this trouble? Uh, and when you know even some people in the base must realize there's fire where the smoke is. And the fire is not only in California. Uh, <laughs> I think so. it's because they have judges just flooding all of our courts right now. Conservative judges, although it doesn't seem but to me that base, that's why quite. Is the or the base why supporting is the, him? Well, we raid all the of ba those. The base keeps on saying they like him. Why is that? The question is, why do Republicans vote against their own best interest? And I don't care if it's Donald Trump. I don't care if it's back in the days of Ronald Reagan. I don't care when it is. It's because he's got them on the hook for the social issues. I'm going to keep immigrants out of America and not take your jobs. I'm going to make sure that the Roe v. Wade is reversed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get you on all the social issues I possibly can. And that's why you're going to stick to me. And that's why the Republicans, a lot of them say, yeah, we look, bad, you know, we look past your bad behavior and your actions, but you've got us hooked on the social issues that we've been trying to get for 30 years. And while he's saying this at rallies and in Fox News, fact is he's, he's got uh, uh, Brad Parswell sending out all these social media messages to targeted audiences. We don't get them, none of us three, but the people in Kentucky are probably yeah. getting a lot of them and messaging exactly the same thing. Okay, next week, what can we expect to see? Ooh, um, who knows? But I know that, like I, I say every time, the more we... Back him into the corner, the more things are going to get dangerous. So, so next week, we're going to be looking at some new testimonies that we get to watch yeah. and yeah. see. So okay. I think things are going to really change then. Check it out. Mm -hmm. yeah. If All Donald right, Trump right. loves reality TV, he's going to get a big dose of it. And yeah. that starts Wednesday. Yeah. And you watch him flip out. Watch him take to Twitter. And, you know, you'll see more Twitter tweets than, you know, ever before. Is this going to really come unhinged? And that's going to put... Many, many tens of millions of people, Americans, watching this thing day in and day out, all day long. Yeah. We already watch, you know, hours of it every day, but this is going to expand the number of hours we watch. And I don't know how it's going to play out. But that's yeah. what we should be looking at for next week. I ran home at 13 years old, and I ran home to watch those hearings. I don't have to run home anymore because it's on my phone. <laughs> yeah, right. So well, I, there it is. We should not forget the Americans will, all Americans will be watching this wherever they are. That's correct. Oh, Cynthia, are you feeling okay now? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> hey, when I was in um, uh, driver's training during the impeachment for Nixon, and so our teacher would make us listen. We didn't make us because I thought it was interesting. The rest of the students were like, oh, blah, blah. I was like really into it. And so I paid attention back then. And so I'm anxious to see the differences and 
the way that the new media and new social media changes all the dynamics. Because I'm maybe sure the Democrats are really being smart. What they're doing is upstaging the trial to follow. So if people watch what happens in the in the uh, House, they're going to be tired already watching it in the yeah. Senate. Right. Yeah, oh, that's a good point. Right. Okay, it's all about fatigue. It's all about fatigue. All about okay, we're fatigued today. We're going to have to cut the show. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. Tim Apicello. <laughs> Appreciate Cynthia it. Cynthia Sinclair. Thanks, Jay. Don't See, you tired. See you next week. See you next week. Aloha. 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 <laughs>